Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and welcome to the mess that is my desk. Um, and today, we're, well, um, originally I was planning to live stream this. Um, now I'm kind of happy I didn't, because quite frankly, I don't, like, yes, I fixed it, but, like, whatever, it was a mess. Um, nonetheless, a fan all the way from New Zealand of AHOC sent in one of these. And it's uh, not because, you know, the, the, they felt like uh, sending me a working $1,000 graphics card. It was because they, uh, the card failed and for whatever reason they couldn't get it through RMA or something. Like, I don't know the details. Either way, I, have a 1080, I had a 1080 Ti here that didn't work. Um, and it's currently in this system and I fixed it. Uh, well, partially. It do, it's not quite fully operational it's like it turns on and it displays an image which is major major progress over what what condition it came in so let's just pull it out of the system and uh, yeah so here you can clearly see that's a 1080 ti pcb um, i mean the giveaway is that you have well it's an nvidia pcb we have the eight mounting holes and you know you have the founders edition rounded edges eight plus six pins so yeah it's a 1080 ti um, but the problem is, you may notice, well, you may notice that the PCIe slot part of it, the connector, oh boy, camera is overexposed, oh, whatever. Uh, the connector right here is, that's not, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of chewed up. So basically, when I first got this, that entire area was just a giant scorch mark. Um, and there was a short circuit from 12 volts to ground, from the, the 12 volts pin of the PCIe power connector, I mean, PCIe slot to ground. Now... That part of the connector is now gone because it was basically vaporized and I didn't want it uh, connecting to the PCIe slot by any chance because um, that's still shorted out. I've not fixed that short circuit. No, what I've done is, uh, so there's a bodge wire um, over here. And what that bodge wire does is that there was a shunt down here, which you can just about see. So there was a current shunt right there. And that shunt was hooked up to this blown up connector. So all the 12 volt power, because NVIDIA wants to actually measure all of the power going into one of their cards, all of the power from this 12 volt connector would travel along the PCB, go through that shunt, and then it would go to the actual VRMs and things it needs to power. So I removed that shunt, and after, that, after I removed the shunt, I realized, wait a minute, the short circuit is before the shunt, not after the shunt. So that's great, because that means I don't actually have to do anything difficult, because the short circuit is somewhere in, in like, probably around in the, the area of the PCIe slot that actually blew up. Um, and I don't have to do any difficult work. I just need to supply a 12 volt, uh, 12 volts power to the VRM because it's no longer connected to 12 volts. So, I, so this yellow bodge wire, what that does is it pulls 12 volts from the eight pin over here and feeds it into the VRM. So VRM is still happy that all fires up. Um, and the situation with the PCIe slot down here well, this does actually cause a problem because the connector is like bloody missing. Like there's uh, four or five pins on the end of the connector that are gone um, because they got uh, literally annihilated. Like I didn't need to cut this off. This just sort of crumbled away as I was digging into it, trying to find if I, uh, trying to see if I couldn't uh, fix the short circuit. So that, that's a problem. Now, the thing is, um, there's the pins that are missing here are there's a couple of 12 volt pins that are gone and there is two ground pins that are gone. Um, which the grounds and the 12 volt pins, not a big deal. We have the bodge wire to supply 12 volts, right? So no big deal that the 12 volts part is missing. But the bigger problem is there is a presence pin at the very end of the, uh, of, well, the very, fir like the very first pin on this side of the card is presence. So what I had to do is what was left of that pin, I traced to a point where this black wire goes to. And that black wire now has a, just a, you know, breadboard, uh, type, you know, pl pin right here. So basically when I install the card, I install the card and I plug this into the p first pin of the PCIe slot on, you know, on the uh, edge closer to the CPU and the card works. So I'm just going to demonstrate that that is indeed the case. Now, as of right now, if the card is working the way I think it's working, it should still be not full, it should not be a fully functional 1080 Ti because the missing shunt resistor and the rewired 12 volts power plane means that the card will probably, if, if it got into Windows, it should go into safety mode and shouldn't actually be operational. And the camera is kind of getting in my way of checking if the connection there is good. Yeah, okay, that should be fine. Um, I don't actually know what happens when that pin isn't connected. I've not tried it. 
Um, all of the reading I've done says it's necessary. It doesn't say what the failure mode is, so I don't want to find, like, I really don't want to find out if it's something really bad. So, just in case, I do, do plug that in um, always. It might not even be necessary, but again, I don't, I don't know what would happen, and this is a 1080 Ti, so I'm not interested to find out that it kills the card if the, the, the pin isn't plugged in. It might turn out that nothing happens, which would probably make the most sense, but is that plugged in? It doesn't feel like it's plugged in. There we go. Now it's plugged in. Card is still. Okay, where's that HDMI cable? Okay, it fell to the floor. So let's plug this in. And we should be good to go. So I'm just going to safe boot this. And that was safe boot, right? Yeah. <laughs> there. OK, so that's fired up. Let's take a look at the monitor over here. You can see nothing, 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 nothing. Uh, if we look at the motherboard, uh, the postcode, that, that's a 4F. That's a 20 set. Can you? Yeah, B2. B2 is GPU initialization. And at this point, bam. Card works. Um, yeah. Works. Not much to it. So, yeah, now all I have to do is, like, I assume it's going to be in safety mode if we get into Windows, so I basically need to hotwire, uh, well, bypass the current monitoring system on the card, which really isn't that difficult. That's just going to be a voltage divider off of 12 volts, which will be, like, I think... Uh, I think I was planning like a 33 ohm resistor and something like 150k um, because you need to get a very small voltage drop across it and then you just feed that into the INA3221 and the card will forever think that it's pulling 30 or 50 watts or whatever um, which completely bypasses the power limit but it also means that the card will not complain about the fact that one of the shunts is completely gone because obviously it can see that hey <laughs> wait a minute there's there's no power going through this this power connection why is there no power that's is a problem we, we better go into safety mode so yeah card works um i, I yeah I, I i fixed it so now i have a 1080 ti i guess um for free <laughs> so that's nice um i'm kind of i don't know i'm not very impressed myself that you know this was kind of too easy to fix I was hoping for something a bit more drastic than just one, like, two bodge wires and card works. But, yeah, it works. And the monitor has gone off with the system. So, yeah, I have actually fixed that thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know what to do with it now. <laughs> because it's like, I never, I never, I didn't have any plans to, for a 1080 Ti, like, anytime soon for, like, ages and ages. So... Yeah. But now it's going to like blow away all of my high scores with the Vegas. That's sad. Like that that's mainly the problem. <laughs> it's like I was happy that I had like decent scores in Firestrike with a Vega and now it's just like, oh yeah, but if I, if I like run a 1080 Ti at stock, it's going to outscore it. Well, actually no. With a light overclock it'll outscore it because the Vega on LN2 did get pretty close to like a water-cooled uh, OC. 1080 Ti, so yeah, there, got a working, come on, 1080 Ti now, so yeah, and uninstalling the card from the system, you just pull it out and fall over and yeah, so that works, and yeah, so huge thanks to the guy who sent it in, because I now have a working 1080 Ti, <laughs> So that's fun. Um, but I don't have any, like, yeah, I, I guess I'll just go and be benchmark it. So, damn. I think I'll e-power it. Like, the stock VRM on this isn't too bad, but I still want to e-power it. Like, actually, no, I mean, so many options, so many options. Like, this... So the, the fun thing about 1080 Ti's is they use a UP9511 voltage controller. That thing is completely analog. So you can, like, re, like it, it, with hard mods, you can go to town on it. You can change the switching frequency. You can change the load line calibration. You can change the... Uh, you can actually uh, change the input voltage. Like, you can completely bypass NVIDIA's driver and, like, override the, the core, uh, core voltage manually, which is really, really cool. Um, what else can I can I do? Um, 
so yeah, I can bypass the core voltage. I think I should be able to do that for the memory as well, because there's another, like th these cards, like all the voltage controllers on here are analog. So yeah, um, that's kind of that. There's not really much, much else to do. I guess I can try cap mod it a bit um, and then run it on dry ice or liquid nitrogen or whatever. Probably liquid nitrogen. I mean, it is, it is a 1080 Ti. So hopefully, like, I don't know how good the card was before. Um, at least I don't remember. I didn't really care that much. It's just like, I need to fix it first. So, yeah. But it is now repaired, so that that's, that's kind of that. And uh, I guess I'll uh, quickly try to take it apart and just show you the PCB in more detail without the, the heatsink on it, but there really isn't much to it. Like, as I said, basically just the PCIe slot got completely obliterated. And then I spent way too long trying to figure out, like, I spent a lot of time really confused about, like, why the VRM, w like, I couldn't figure out where the VRM was getting 12 volts. And initially it was like, oh, it's because I had the wrong data sheet. Um, turns out Alpha and Omega Semiconductor make an E6932, and they also make an A6932. So I had the A version, not the E version, and that was really annoying for a bit. But yeah, here's a card. Yellow bodge wire for 12 volts. Um, that is looped through that screw hole so that I don't accidentally rip out that point that I've attached it to. So yeah, 1080 Ti, Founder's Edition fixed. So yeah, I, I was worried that like the V-Core VRM was shorted out, which is why the PCIe slot blew up. But no, the PCIe slot blew up because, I don't know, I guess there was like a manufacturing defect in the, in the PCB itself. And so the PCB shorted through or like water got in there or something. And the, the, then it shorted out and blew up. And now it's like, like it basically like there was like the copper in that area looked like it was melted. So that got really hot. Um, and it's still shorted out, but the card does work, so... <laughs> yeah, because basically the, the, the reason why it works is that short circuit is, like, it's no longer getting any voltage to it. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, uh, subscribe, we'll leave a comment or any questions down below. Um, or any suggestions for what I should do with this. <laughs> again, I have no, no plans for a 1080 Ti. I didn't think I'd actually have a working one. Especially not a Founders Edition. Like, on the off chance that I got a 1080 Ti, I would have been buying a custom one, and it's just like, oh yeah, uh, dead uh, Founders Edition turned up at my door, and it's like, okay, well, it's no longer dead. So, yeah, that's, that's nice. And, uh, I've gone over the like, share, subscribe thing, comments as well. If you'd like to support actually hardcore overclocking and everything I do here, um, there I have a PayPal, a Patreon. Uh, you can also send in stuff. I have a PO box, um, which you should send an email about sending things to me at uh, to buildzoid at gmail.com if you want to send anything in, like dead graphics cards. Um, they're they're like I'm, I'm I'm gonna you know I don't want random stuff turning up, so the, the PO box is not public in that sense. And uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, and there's also uh, AHOC shirts you can buy, which there's a link to all of that down in the description below. And that's it for the video, and goodbye. <laughs>